So I'm Sarah Steiner Barella. I am the Vice President and Dean of Academic Affairs, um, and I'm really happy to be the host of this webinar. Uh, just a few words about how it works before I uh, before we uh, get started. I am going to uh, let my colleagues introduce themselves, and then I'm going to have our wonderful interns introduce themselves. Um, and they're going to tell you a little bit. We have four of our senior student interns um, who uh, ha are, have been working all summer in their internships and have been really working hard to get ready for fall. And they're going to tell you a little bit about what they've been doing um, and talk to you about, I think, what you'll want to know for you, students and parents uh, on their way to Franklin. So you, as panelists, are not supposed to see yourselves. You just see that as webinar attendees, you won't see yourselves. You'll just see the panelists. And uh, again, I'm Sarah Steiner Barella, uh, also known as Dean SSB, um, and I'm the host. And I am going to have everyone introduce themselves. You can type your, um, you can certainly type questions into the chat, and we will get to the questions. But the idea is we're going to listen um, to everyone's uh, brief introductions, and then we'll get to questions, and we'll have lots of time to answer them. So I'm going to start with Dean Deborah and ask her to introduce herself. Hi everyone, welcome. Um, good to see some of the parents back and welcome to all the new parents for the first time joining our webinar. I'm Deborah Knaust. I'm the Dean of Student Life and Engagement. So um, under my office is career services, housing, residence life, insurance, immigration, uh, mental health, physical health and well-being, um, recreational sports, and probably a host of other things that I'm forgetting to say. Um, I'm happy to take your questions. Um, and, and we'll be able to address those at the end after we hear from the interns. Welcome. And Petra? Yeah, so hi everybody. My name is Petra Orange. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admissions. Um, so as part of our amazing admissions team across the U.S. and of course our campus here in Lugano, um, it's nice to be here. Obviously very excited to welcome our new class in the next couple of weeks. And now I'm going to have a chance to, we're going to have a chance to introduce our wonderful student interns. So just to give you a little bit of context, um, as COVID approached, we had a number of our uh, juniors and seniors who had internships that were, that disappeared or they had planned internships they weren't able to do or they weren't able to return home as they expected. So we were able to offer four internships this summer. One on food and sustainability, sustainable food ways, one on uh, orientation and preparation for a virtual orientation, online orientation, one on risk management, and one on uh, online and hybrid learning. And so I'm really happy to introduce our interns. We have Gabby Munoz, Frida Terrazas Carillo, Luciana Vasquez, and William Wallace. And we're going to start with Gabby, and she'll tell us a little bit about, no, we're going to start with Frida. I'm out of order already. I'm sorry. She's going to tell us a little bit about orientation, because that's what the very first thing uh, that your students will get to do. And again, for those of you who have maybe just joined, I say we're up to 50. I'm really happy. I'm Sarah Steiner Barella. I'm the Vice President and Dean of Academic Affairs. I will take your questions after we've heard from everyone um, and we'll get to them uh, then. Okay, go ahead, Frida, and okay. tell me when you're ready for me to share something. Okay? okay, so hi everyone, my name is Frida. I'm a rising senior here at Franklin and I was the orientation and training intern this summer. So basically what I did over the summer was just find a sustainable way to move orientation online. And so I helped um, the Office of Student Life and its staff to like, redesign the platform. So the platform that you all see when you apply to Franklin is called Slate. And as of right now, it's, well, Dean, Dean SSB will sh uh, share her screen in a second and she'll show you what that looks like. But the new design went live today at 6 p.m. Swiss time. So for those of you who are new, you know, incoming students, you'll see this when you look at your, uh, when you log into the Franklin website, and so as we have more information and as new things start, you know, getting closer, this will change. And so over the summer, I have been working with Russell and we have like filmed and prepared a few videos for you guys. So it's more interactive and you guys get all the information and you guys, you know, get prepared to get to Franklin. And it's a more fun way of like looking at, you know, instead of having a lot of information, you have videos, so you'll see them there. And you know, you see that, for example, you have to fill your math placements or do certain things by a certain time, which is normally what you do during orientation. So you'll have, 
you'll get rid of all of that and like before you get to Franklin, which is nice. And so yeah, let me know if you have any questions. So I'm gonna stop that share and think about your questions. We're gonna go through the different interns, but so Frida did a, thank you Frida. That's a really great introduction. All those things, everyone will be signing up for a math placement and a, a, a writing placement. They're not tests. I just wanna say that to everyone and go on record. I'll be recorded saying that they are not tests. They just measure where your student, um, where your students are, if you're incoming students, so that you're put in the right level class. Okay. Uh, Frida, can you tell us where you're from before we move on to Gabby? Ah, yes. I'm from Durango, Mexico. So, you have a wonderful international group. Okay. And so I'm going to pass on to Gabby Munoz, who is our um, food, sustainable food and sustainable education, sustainable, or sustainable food, food ways was the title. Yeah, sorry education intern. All right. Hi, everyone. So my name is Gabby Munoz. I grew up just outside of Chicago, and I actually graduated this past May. And so the internship program came in at the best time because, as Dean SSB said, a lot of us did lose um, internships. And so, yeah, I have mainly been working in the garden and developing a plan to uh, manage the garden sustainably as we move into the next year um, and post-COVID. And as a part of my work, I have been um, kind of coordinating with the dining hall. And so I wanted to address some of your questions that you might have about how you're gonna be getting food and how you can get food during quarantine. Cause I know that that's probably on a lot of your minds. And so I think Dean SSB is gonna pull up a form. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is gonna really apply to all students who are coming from a quarantine zone. And then the second part of what I'm gonna talk about is more for um, new students, incoming students, but it's still good information for everyone. All right. And so this is a form, it's a questionnaire that all students should be getting. Um, who are coming from quarantining zones. And so our dining hall is going to be providing um, meal services for those who choose it. And so we have three options. Students can either choose to have all of their meals delivered, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for all 10 days of quarantine. They can choose to have lunch and dinner for 10 days, or they can choose a custom number of meals. And one thing that is important to take in mind is that if you are a new student and you already have a meal plan, um, this will be deducted from your meal plan. If you are an upperclassman, if you are a rising senior, um, you can still have this option, but you will have to pay for it. And so when you get this plan, you get to choose different, um, different diets, vegan, vegetarian, um, there's omnivore, which may include beef or chicken, but not pork. Um, and so if you want to keep scrolling down, we'll look at the other options. So you fill out your name, the residence that you're in, your arrival date, and your estimated time of arrival. Everyone needs to arrive on the weekend of August 28th so that we can coordinate these efforts. And then on the next page, Yes, you'll get to choose how many meals you want, your diets, and then and number seven for special note, you can put in um, any types of allergies that you have. The dining hall is super accommodating of all of these needs. And yeah. Oh, and then you can put in any additional items, um, basic hygienic products. Yes, and so this is for everyone who is coming from a, um, zone that needs to quarantine. Uh, the dining hall will be delivering the meals to the different residences. And when they deliver, it's very important that everyone wears a mask and gloves to pick up their food. And so, of course, this does not include snacks. And so the next thing I have to talk about is takeout in case, you know, you want something a little bit different than the dining hall or um, grocery delivery so that you can have snacks and so that you can have um, if you want to cook. And so we are going to be providing this PDF with hyperlinks um, to students 
So for takeout options, we have a couple. We have Devora and Festivory. These are the most utilized um, companies. And so they take food from restaurants downtown and they deliver it from various restaurants in Lugano. The only difference between Devora and Festivory is that Festivory has an app, but they're both great. Lots of students use them. And then this is Roberto. So um, all returning students know Roberto, but if you're a new student, you will get to know Roberto um, and his wife. So the two of them own a family, it's a family owned shop and it's visible from campus. And I actually contacted um, Roberto today to ask him if he'd like to be included in this webinar. He said, yes, um, he was very, very excited. And so you can contact him via WhatsApp. This is his number. Again, we are gonna be sharing this resource, but if you wanna write it down or add it to your phone right now, you can. There's a minimum price of 15 francs and he has a lot of, um, well, it is a small shop, but he does have a variety. He specializes in sandwiches. Um, he has some American foods in there. So yes, support Roberto. And then if you want pizza, there is Speedy Pizza. Um, which you can order online from. And then for grocery delivery, we have these two options. There is Le Shop and Co-op. Um, they're both just typical grocery delivery. You go online, you fill a cart, put in the address, um, and they drop it off at your residence. The only thing is that you must spend 100 francs. That is the minimum. And it requires a Swiss phone number so that they can call you when they are delivering. And you might be asking, is it worth it to be spending 100 francs on groceries? Personally, I have used this one time. I would say yes, it really is worth it, especially if it's at the beginning of the semester to be able to kind of stock up if you're going to be in quarantine and you want to cook. Um, I really do believe that it is worth it. And then one last thing is that all new students will be getting the address of their residence upon arrival so that they know where they can send or where they can um, have their takeout delivered to. Thank you. Okay, before we go on to Luciana, I'm gonna to try to, uh, I'm gonna to try to upload those things into our chat. So I'll try to do that. Well, Luciana, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Hi everyone, I'm Luciana. I'm a rising senior and I'm from Paraguay. Um, so this summer I've been working with IT and faculty members. Um, my internship name is Online and Hybrid Learning Environment Intern. Um, so what we've been doing is working with faculty, uh, helping them transition their classes, help like continuing their transitions because most of them already started um, in spring. So we help them continue that transition into an online platform either through Zoom, Teams, or Mastering Moodle, which is the platform that Franklin usually uses for all the online um, classes that we have. Um, for fall, we're gonna be having, at least the first two weeks, um, are gonna be all hybrid, and then we can continue that throughout the semester. Um, all students are, will be required to have, be either wearing masks in class or um, having, um, a two meter distance between each other. Uh, professors will be very accommodating. Everyone has mastered the usage of either Zoom, Teams, or Moodle, so professors know how to uh, continue their classes through those platforms, and if you have any questions, there's always support um, from IT services or the professors themselves or other students that have already taken classes from spring semester. Um, Personally speaking, I think that it was a really interesting experience because professors have been trying really hard to continue their, their Franklin experience because obviously Franklin is mostly from the in-class, the potential learning that you have, um, what, is, what you get the best from it. Um, but professors have been working really hard to make uh, that same experience available for students that are not going to be here for the first couple of weeks. So. Uh, anything I'm missing, Dina um, I don't think so, but just so, just to remind people, we've been getting, I've been getting a few questions and, and maybe Luciana can speak to this a little bit as well. 
is that um, if your students, we've, I think, Petra, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we've had really good luck so far getting visas. Um, if your student has trouble traveling or, is, or students, if you're having trouble getting a visa, we will wait for you. That was a staggered start date idea. Um, and we've really been doing a lot of work and Luciana has been doing a lot of work so that students who aren't in the classroom will have, actually, we have new microphones, we have new soundproofing, we have new, so there's no echo, we have new uh, cameras in the classroom so that you can get the impression of being in the classroom, even if you're not there. Um, so we have campus protocol that are coming out. Um, all students in all public areas will be asked to wear masks. That's something we're gonna have to get used to. Um, and in classrooms where you can't social distance, the regular social distancing is one and a half meters here, but we've asked for two meters, then we will, if, you can, if you're in a class, meaning if you're in a large classroom with five people, we won't necessarily require you to wear a mask. That would be at the discretion of the professor. But uh, as soon as you're, if you can't social distance at least two meters, you will be asked to wear a mask in the classroom as well. It is likely, your professors will be wearing masks because that's what the Department of Education here has asked people to do. Um, okay, so that's just a little bit about that. We can answer more about that in the questions. I'm gonna go over to William, who is, this is a good transition actually, masks to risk management in terms. William. Hi, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, my name is William Wallace. I'm from Redding, California, United States. And I am a recent graduate from May 2020 as well. My internship this summer has been in risk management as Dean SSB mentioned. And so uh, a lot of my work has touched different areas of campus and has been between some forward facing things and some behind the scenes areas. Uh, and so one of the things that I'm proud to say is that I've looked at uh, a lot of the different risk areas for the general reopening of campus in the fall and then also for some more specific things like academic travel down the road. And uh, I'm happy to say that Franklin is very well equipped to handle some of the things that we thought of for fall 2020 that are coming up and that we've uh, by an objective scale, looked at a lot of different considerations. Um, and so as far as how we're going to be managing personal risk when people are coming to campus, uh, one of the ways that we're going to be handling the COVID is through the Swiss COVID app, which is an app provided by the Swiss government. And it is the gateway for contact tracing and for receiving testing and for a lot of different services that are related to that. And so it's something that's available on the App Store if you're interested in downloading that ahead of time. And it works, it works through the Bluetooth on your phone. Uh, it hasn't seemed to eat up battery any more than anything else. So, it, and it will let you know if your Bluetooth is not working and when it's not doing something. So it's a really helpful app. And the Swiss government uses that for, so as I had said, it uses it for the contact tracing. And so it uses that Bluetooth to determine how close you've been to other people. And it does all of this anonymously to protect your data and will let you know if you've been close to somebody who's had a positive test later and will inform you to get tested. And if this app tells you to get tested, then that is going to be provided by the government or by other services. And so if you're told to do testing, it will be taken care of. Um, in addition to using the app for your personal safety, as we'd said before, we ask that people wear masks, especially in classrooms and on crowded and public places in the campus and around the community in general. Right now in Switzerland, it is law to wear the masks on all public transport and many airlines flying internationally and uh, perhaps domestically in places that you're from are already asking people to wear masks on flights as well. Uh, additionally, social distancing is another key part of this. Wearing a mask or not, social distancing is crucial. Um, I see in the question someone asked to repeat the name of the app. The app is Swiss COVID, one word. Uh, and maybe DSB, if you have it open, could you show it again on your screen? Yes. Oh, perfect, thank you. I, mean, I don't know if you can see it very well, but that's what the that better? No. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Um, uh, but loading the app before landing in Switzerland is a question I just saw in the group. I would say that either I would say it's not something that you need super early before you go, but it's something that if you're maybe not going to remember to get it when you land, 
in Switzerland, then maybe have it before you go. But outside of Switzerland, the app isn't going to be doing anything for you until you get there. So if you're going to forget, or if you just want to have it on and ready to go so that when you land, it's already working, then uh, I would say more power to you to have it and have it ready. And we also have another app that, sorry, we ask students to download. It's called Safety. Um, it's just another way for us to know. That's something that we use to know uh, if you have it on we can, and you have a problem, you can hit the help me SOS button and you'll get a response from someone on campus. And it could be that you're traveling, it could be that you're anywhere and we'll know. We are not using this to track students or to try to, try to figure out where they are. That's not interesting to us, I promise. But we do, it, we've had students who have been in trouble. They have not been on campus. They've been traveling in like Barcelona and in years past when that was easier to do, um, call us and we were able to help them through a difficult time. So safety is something that will give you an access code to get when you get to campus. Um, and the COVID app is free, you can just download it. And I will look, I have a nice little infogram to share with you um, that we're gonna be sharing with everyone as well that shows you how to get those also. William, do you wanna say anything else about, oh, maybe a word about academic travel? Yeah, certainly. Um, so academic travel will be happening in fall 2020. We've been monitoring the countries that academic travel is prepared to go to to make sure that there are no um, regional lockdowns, that there are no un sort of hot spots rising up in the areas that we're planning to go. And we've limited the, um, the breadth of locations to sort of keep the risk manageable and make sure that people are able to safely return back to Switzerland on a moment's notice if possible. And um, and so by keeping track of this, it's something that helps us stay on top of just the management of the risk and making sure that people are okay. Um, excuse me, sorry, I got a little turned around there. Um, but yeah, no, we've been on top of we've been on top of the academic travel locations, monitoring hot spots, monitoring reopening, monitoring um, hospitals, making sure professors have information of what the um, what the rules are for the country, what regulations, who's able to go, and our priority is making sure that people are safe, making sure that the risk of transmitting disease is low, and that the risk of bringing it back to Franklin also remains low, and that the ability to return to Switzerland or uh, find a safe location is possible throughout the duration of travel. And those are the sort of key points of our preparations. So I just want to share one last thing, which is, uh, aha, mm -hmm. uh -huh. this is our latest campaign, Protect Yourself and Fuss. And this is what happens, right? This is just to kind of follow up on uh, what William was just referring to. If you have the COVID app, you get notification, what do you do? You return to your residence immediately. You contact the coordinator for medical services for testing protocols. Contact the, the COVID hotline, sorry. Uh, and you're gonna be quarantining for 10 days, right? Um, alternatively, if you're not feeling well, you have the cough and flu, you, your flu-like symptoms, your loss of taste or smell, the same protocol, you contact the coordinator for medical services for testing protocols. If you have had contact with a positive case, then you'll quarantine. If you have had no known contact with a positive case, then you quarantine until you're 24 hours without symptoms. And you can see here on this, we'll have the links. So those are gonna be all around campus. Just to say, this is something we've been thinking about a lot and we're planning on. Um, okay, I think this would probably be a good time to open up to some of the questions. Um, the safety app, if I could get everyone to download it, that would make me so happy. I will include the information. I'll make sure, I'm not sure if I can get the information before they get here, or, but I think I can, so we will try to do that. I, I think students get it um, when they get some of the IT information. I right. thought that was sent to them ahead of time. So um, they should be checking their personal emails and then they can um, have that information in there. It might not be today, but in the, in the coming weeks, they'll be getting lots of emails. Please encourage your student to read their email frequently, and then take the action that they need. Um, and I'm just gonna go through some of the questions in the order they came. We got one earlier about what type of computer is recommended for first year students. Um, whatever kind of computer your student uses is fine. A laptop is what they need. I think I can let the interns, if they have a recommendation, it doesn't really matter. They're all, you can, with an adapter, they all work here. Do you guys have a recommendation? 
I would just say that I've seen a lot of different computers on campus. So whatever your student is most comfortable with. So uh, the important thing is to bring a computer. What we're going to follow up from this webinar is a what to pack list. That's coming next. Um, we have a nice letter that one of our students who actually came back for summer session in quarantines, what to do during quarantine and what he was happy to have. And, and there's a list that includes, don't forget your computer and headphones. Because when you're starting your classes remotely because you're in quarantine, then you'll want the headphones because everything will work better. Um, yeah. And then there's also going to be, just to also maybe put this out there for the for, for students and parents, lots of great activities that maybe at the end Frida can speak to a little bit um, and maybe Luciana for the students who are going to be starting in quarantine. We're not going to abandon you to your rooms. Uh, there'll be a lot of things going on. So students cannot go outside when you're quarantined, you're stuck in your room. That's the and the Swiss are really serious about quarantining. So they're checking. You have to check in with the Canton. We'll take care of that for students who come to campus. It's not a problem. But they are checking and the fine is up to 10,000 francs. So it's being taken quite seriously. Okay, I'm going to keep going down here and maybe I can not talk so much. Answer that one. Students have refrigerators in their room. Yes, yes. every room has a refrigerator. Not every room has a kitchen. So um, in uh, LDV, there's a common kitchen. Um, in, in, in Arone, there's a common kitchen. Um, so we will have assigned hours for quarantine students to use the kitchen and for non-quarantine students to use the kitchens. But every room has a refrigerator. I know so, someone asked about arriving early. Um, only student leaders have permission to arrive early. So we are not equipped to support anyone else. Um, we offer food service starts August 28th. So anyone arriving before that has to manage everything on their own. So we're recommending students arrive on the dates that were posted in the academic calendar, August 28th and 29th were the first dates. Um, and everyone is going to be quarantining, to, not everyone, but many students will quarantine together and uh, we will have the services available for them to help them through that process. I'm just gonna back up a little bit. So Someone asked about getting a Swiss SIM card to get food and pharmacy if you're in quarantine. So you can get, well, again, we'll share the, if someone came in late, the food services opportunities. So you can just order from food services. You can order from the places that are off campus as well. You don't have to have a Swiss SIM for, because there'll be Wi-Fi everywhere. So it shouldn't be a problem. Um, and then you can get the SIM afterwards, or you can probably get a SIM card in the, in the airport. Yeah, I would Petra, say, do you have a better um, idea? Yeah. yeah, I think that's been our main kind of uh, recommendation that if families are flying into Switzerland, so Zurich or Geneva, um, that that's going to be the easiest to pick it up. Uh, but I think Gabby was right in saying that for a lot of the other apps, you will not necessarily have that as a requirement uh, because they either use the app or through the website, so you don't need a number. Uh, but obviously for some of the grocery deliveries and things like that, it's there. But um, I'm sure students can share. We can figure out other options and things like that if that is just a matter of getting things delivered. Yes. Um, Gabby was mentioning that um, that's Amore, which is the deli across the street. Um, Roberto's the owner, he uses WhatsApp, which is a free app that you can download. And that's how I communicate with my family. So it's free texting, you can share photos and links. Um, so it's free with, with Wi-Fi. So I recommend downloading WhatsApp. You probably all have WhatsApp, but if you don't, everyone in Europe has WhatsApp. <laughs> so. And I just um, wanted to clarify, I know that this is a lot of information and that's where the PDF is gonna come in. Super, super, hand, um, super handy, but yeah, the Swiss phone number is only for ordering groceries. It's not for takeout. It's not for Roberto's. It's not for Speedy Pizza or for the dining hall. It's only for groceries. And so if you do want the SIM card, airport is your best bet. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going through. I have a lot of messages kind of. Uh, so for students coming for academic travel, a question about the passport. If you have a US passport or a European passport or any passport, as long as you have your visa, we'll be uh, normally helping you get your student permit. And with your student permit, you can travel. So it'll allow you to travel anywhere within the Schengen as if you were uh, from Switzerland, so to speak. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, Someone asked about um, residents. So um, 
uh, current returning students already selected housing, so they know where they're going to be. New students have filled out the housing form. If they haven't, please encourage them to do that now uh, with as much information as possible. We use that information to match students with roommates for the housing. So we do our absolute best to have, make sure students all get their top three, one of the top three choices that they've selected. So if you remember what your student has selected on their housing form, very likely, it's not always possible, but we do our, our best to really make sure we have a good roommate match and that students get the, one of the top three choices. So first we're going to do the placement. Second step is then we need to look at who needs to quarantine. The quarantine um, list is updated frequently by the Swiss government. So what we see today could change before students arrive. So we're hopeful that um, the high risk countries will decrease, but we don't know. So right now the list does include the US as well as other, um, uh, I think there's 26 countries listed. It's about where you're traveling from, not your passport. So if you're Canadian and you live in, in the US, you're traveling from the US, you will have to quarantine, even though Canada is not on the list. So it's about the country where you're traveling from. So that's what we'll be going by. And um, then we'll look at who needs to quarantine in housing. And we will be, um, either we'll move the quarantine student or we'll move the non-quarantine student, depending on the situation. We have reserved housing um, for this situation, but with, we're looking at, I think, Petra, 100 new students um, coming and maybe 80 of them might need to quarantine based on the current list. So we are doing our absolute best to make sure everyone has a great experience, but we just ask for your patience and flexibility um, as we do our best to support your student through this process. So I have a question about random testing. Right now, the Swiss are not recommending random testing, and so we are following the guidelines of the government. Um, there is, again, testing is available for anyone who the app recommends that they get tested or the doctor or the health, uh, our, our health professional recommends it. We will, however, if someone isn't feeling well or falls ill, yes, they will be able to continue their courses online from their room. While we want people on campus, we do really want your student on campus and we don't want them to say, likewise, if they're on campus, I don't want students to say, I think I'm just going to not that our students would ever do this, but I'm just going to stay in my pajamas and not go to class. No, we want you in class. However, if you're not feeling well, if you have to quarantine, we are not asking anyone to be putting themselves or anyone else in jeopardy. Stay home. You can log, you can remote in and it will not be a problem. So while we want to get students to campus, so we're all in the same time zone and we can talk easily and we can communicate easily. Um, if you aren't feeling well, then you'll be able to take class from, from your room. And it's possible, I don't, I, I don't foresee this happening, of course, but it's possible that the authorities tell us, okay, uh, everybody has to, no one can have class in class anymore, and we have to go back, which is what we did last spring. It's not ideal, but it's, it's manageable. Um, Someone asked if they will quarantine with the roommate. Um, if, if two roommates are in the same uh, bedroom, like LDV, um, yes, if they're both quarantining, they can quarantine together. Um, we do have some rooms like in new building where students have their own bedrooms um, and shared uh, kitchen and bathrooms. Uh, we're doing our best to avoid any quarantine students in the same place with non-quarantine, but we may need to have a situation where students have their own bedroom and they quarantine in their bedroom and they work out a schedule with their roommates when they'll use the kitchen and when they'll use the bathroom. And the Swiss um, government actually has guidelines for a shared roommate situation like that. So we already have information on what we would tell the students if we have to do that. Again, our preference is that we're able to separate people um, so that it's an easier um, 10 days situation. Petra, do you have a recommendation about the airports and how? Sure, I mean, obviously we're watching everything closely. So we know that recommending Swiss airports is always going to be on the safer end um, of everything. But obviously uh, on a general basis, students either fly into Zurich or into Milan in Italy. 
Um, so I think just keep a lookout with the information that's there. Um, the Office of Student Life is putting wonderful videos together, right? To really help students guide how to get from the airport to campus. Um, so all of that is coming. Obviously, we're always here and happy to kind of help with any questions. Uh, but I think a lot of what we've seen across our campus with our students, that it really does depend on where you're coming from, whether you may get a better connection going into Geneva, into Zurich, or into Milan. So we do recommend checking all options. Um, and then just keeping an eye on that. So if someone is to quarantine, we've had a couple questions from people who are, are Swiss but live in the U.S. As Dean Deborah said, it matters where you're coming from, not where your passport is from. But it is possible if you have family in another Schengen adjoining country or in, in Switzerland and you're going to quarantine in a family setting. Well, all we need, we need to know is, and you'll be able to show us this, that your boarding pass or your, your ticket says you arrived 10 days prior. You do need to, if you're doing it in Switzerland, you do need to announce yourself to the Switzerland authorities within two days and let them know and they're going to register you and you can certainly quarantine elsewhere. You don't have to quarantine on campus. Um, if you were coming in earlier and you wanted to quarantine elsewhere, that might make sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense coming in earlier to campus to quarantine where we can't provide the services that you might uh, need. I just shared the list of countries. Again, this list is changing frequently. So what we see today could change in a week or two weeks, three weeks. Um, so this is the list as of today. And please check it um, to see, make sure the Schengen country that you're selecting because um, I think Sweet, uh, Sweden is, is on the high risk list. So if you were going to quarantine in Sweden, you'd still need to quarantine when you came back to Switzerland. So just check the list to make sure before you make your decision. Right, that's very good advice. Um, also, I've had, a, I've had this question, I see a question by, uh, by a parent, I think, and I've had this question by a few students. If I pay for my own test, can I get tested when I'm there and avoid quarantine? No, because the problem is, even if you test negative when you're there, there's no guarantee that three days later you don't develop symptoms and test positive. So everyone has to do the 10 day quarantine. It's not our decision, that's actually a government decision, so it's an easy one to make um, and we'll follow those guidelines. We're convinced that it's keeping, helped keep everyone safe thus far. Um, and so we're fans of that. Um, so uh, yeah. someone asked, will quarantine be in the final residence call room? We don't know yet. It's possible that it might not. So for 10 days, um, students might be in a temporary location. It really depends. We have to look at um, where they're placed, who they're placed with, what's the situation. So we are um, looking at that very carefully where we want your student to have the best experience and we are doing our best. Um, but we only ha have a certain number of spaces available and that's what we have to work with. So we really appreciate your support and encouragement for your student as they face the unknown. We know this is a little bit daunting um, but we know they chose Franklin for a reason and we're absolutely sure that they can they can do this with flying colors So we're here to provide support starting from August 28th. That's why we're recommending students do not arrive early uh, We're just not equipped before that point. We need to do training um, and food service won't be available. So please make plans to arrive um, Starting August 28th or 29th And we have um, the second phase of arrival too, like Dean Sarah said if you can't make it in August We have September arrival dates too so. so a couple more kind of questions about, uh, hi, Carla, it's good to see that you're out there. AP scores don't determine your math and English placement tests. You take the placement test. Uh, if, okay, they're not tests. See, I said it. They wrote tests. I said test. It's not a test. It's a placement so that we can see what the right level is. Um, and if the student, if you feel like they, you're not placed in the right level, you go talk to the professor, we will take care of it. You can redo it. If you want to redo it, you say, oh, I just didn't do a good job. Fine. This is not written in stone, just in the computer. Um, and it, but typically, students who follow the course that they were placed in do very well. Students who ask to be bumped up in math or in writing and they're allowed to bump up struggle, I don't recommend it. We, the placement is, is remarkably accurate. So I think that's a good thing. Um, can you get things mailed from amazon.de or IKEA? Sure, I guess that's possible. And you can have it mailed to Franklin and we'll have it waiting in your student's room. But remember, it's 10 days. It's not a year, it's not six months, it's 10 days. They're all gonna be there together. They're gonna be okay. I don't think it's gonna that- be, They're gonna have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Free to uh, do yes. 
Uh, they're asking about using credit cards. In fact, uh, yes, you need to use, um, for a food service you're going to use, the student will use their meal plan money. I think for the bookstore, they take credit cards. When students order from restaurants or, or delivery, they, they sh I recommend they pay online, use a credit card, because they are not supposed to have an in-person interaction. So to hand cash to someone is an interaction that um, is not supposed to happen. So they should pay online with a credit card. So Dr. Robinson, I think that's you out there. Um, yes, if, they're, if they've recovered from COVID, they still need to quarantine according to the rules set by the Swiss right now. Um, and we've had actually students who are sure they've had it and they've tested negative because it's been over four months. So we're not sure where that, because we just can't know, um, we have to have everyone do the quarantine. Um, um, someone's asking about the transportation to campus. So yes, yes uh, uh, yeah, masks are mandatory and um, on public transportation in Switzerland. So everyone that will be on that train or shuttle or bus will be wearing a mask um, uh, because they could be traveling with somebody who's coming from a high risk country, getting to the point where they're ready to quarantine. So people are getting to that hotel or to their apartment or to on campus um, until they're ready to, to be quarantined. So the USC TTP students, everybody takes the math placement, everybody takes the writing placement. That way we're not discriminating against anyone. And if the student decides, oh, after that first week, I really want to take a writing class or I really want to take a math class and they want to change their schedule, they can still do that. So if they don't need it, it doesn't matter. It'll take, it's 30 minutes. It, it won't take that long. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, it's just simpler for us to have everyone take it. Someone asked about banking. Um, Swiss banking is really complicated. So um, uh, we recommend actually that you, students do not open a bank account if possible, that um, you can pay Franklin through bank transfer. Um, credit cards are widely accepted. Students can use cash when they're ready to go out and about. So I think it's, um, I don't know, these students, you guys want to talk about your money situation? How do you make it work? Do you have a bank account? If you don't, how does it work for you? Yeah. yeah, sorry. I was going to say that I don't have a bank account here in Switzerland because I've heard it's really complicated. So I just use my credit card from back home. And so I, yes, yeah, so like my parents send me a certain amount of money every month. And then like I also, there's some like, uh, odd, you can sign up for odd jobs or like work in the university. So that's also how, you know, I get some of the money, my spending money for each month. And yeah, so I think it's really easy. Everyone takes card, and if not, there's an ATM um, close to campus. Yeah, I also do not have a Swiss bank account. I just use my US accounts, but I got a travel rewards card, which has been super useful. I would really recommend um, asking your bank if they offer any sort of international um, travel program. Yeah, in the same vein, I just use the uh, like debit credit from the US and uh, as long as there's no foreign transaction fees, you should be set. That's probably the main thing to watch out for. And it's not um, totally straightforward for Americans to open bank accounts in Switzerland since the US imposed a bunch of uh, complications on the Swiss. Let's just say there's a kind of a tit for tat thing going on there that makes it a little bit more complicated now for Americans to open bank accounts. It's possible, but it's just a little Someone bit. Someone asked yeah. about how much cash a student should bring with them. Uh, Petra, do you, do you know, do we make recommendations on our financial aid website? I always, you know, say it's like, it's like looking over at the student, like how much do you want me to tell your parents and things like that. <laughs> So um, I think it really depends. I just wanted to add in with the bank accounts, if any of you guys have questions, I mean, um, us in the admissions team and things like that are happy to guide you because we know that this will be different depending on where you're coming from. And it's not always easy from certain countries. So if you do need help with a bank account, we have all the necessary information. So please reach out to me or another member of our team and we will get you sorted. That's not a problem. In terms of the spending money and things like that, I think our general kind of um, idea is that of course, for our most students when they arrive because they do have a meal plan, uh, right? That is a lot of the kind of care things that they need. Um, I think generally we say, you know, try to at least travel with, you know, about two to three hundred dollars, you know, just to kind of be on the safe side for things. And then you'll see as you kind of monitor things along the way in terms of what you need. So have something to start with and things like that. And then you'll figure things out along the way. 
So we have a good question that I've actually been hoping that someone would ask about large classes. And I wanted to speak to this because I've been speaking to some of my colleagues at other universities in the US and frankly, they don't have a plan. We have a plan. We've been monitoring the air quality. We have a computer program that we're not, we don't have a sensor in classrooms. I don't mean that, but that you can calculate the space and window size and number of people. And we've been working at that. Um, when I say we, even my dear colleague, Leslie, I haven't been doing that myself. But um, she has figured this out so that we're figuring in classes uh, that are below 15 students where people can then social distance and have the windows open, bring sweaters for the winter. But we're going to be, it's going to be a windows open during class kind of the year. Um, we can get the airflow that we need so people can feel comfortable. Um, any classes that we've already started working on these that are going to be, our largest class sizes at Franklin are about 24 to be honest with you. We just don't have classrooms that are bigger than that. If a class is gonna have 24 students, then we're either gonna move them to the auditorium, which houses, which fits 200. So you can imagine that will not be a problem with social distance. Alternatively, um, the class will be broken into two sections and the professor will teach that class into two sections. Or if the class meets, for example, on Monday and Thursday, Monday half the class will go and, Thursday, and, the, and half the class will be remote and Thursday they'll switch. So we've been thinking about this a lot and we will not put your students in danger. If the student should feel uncomfortable, they should let the professor know right away. Because if the stu your student feels uncomfortable, someone else does too, and we want to we wanna fix that. Um, the online option, which Katie has put in there, will be available. So uh, the short answer is yes. However, I don't want students to think that they can stay home and not come to campus, right? The idea is students come to class, we know that the best experience that you have is with your Franklin professors. And I think that my interns will confirm that. Um, while in the spring we were successful with online, we did, I think, a really good job. It's not quite the same. And we really want you to have that in-person experience. So if you're well and healthy, we want you to be able to go to class. If you should fall ill, or if a student has a chronic health problem and can't be in class, we will guarantee them that opportunity to work remotely. I won't send a sick kid home. I just don't see that, think that's safe right now, unless it's really safe to do that. If that's the best option, we will. But often traveling isn't in this situation isn't the best option for a person who's sick. So we will work on that with your student and with you to figure out the best, the best options um, and make sure that they're safe and well, and well taken care of. Okay. Deborah, I'm going to leave you the school supply one. Oh, no, that's for me, isn't it? Computer enough. I, I recommend, yes, computer for sure. Yes, but also bring a notebook and bring a pen. And that's going to be in the what to pack, the what to pack list. Uh, because you you might, this is a great time when you're in quarantine, keep a journal or do art projects. There's going to be all kinds of ideas that we're going to include there. Um, but you'll definitely want a pen and something to write on and something to write with. I think, are there any, if somebody has a question that didn't get answered, I would appreciate it if you would put it back into the chat because now the, the, the feed is so long, it's hard to keep track. All right, so my panelists, do you have anything else? I have one question for our students. Um, what would what's one thing you would tell and then i'll get back to this question what would you what advice would you give to new students coming to Franklin? one line uh i'll go ahead and start my uh my advice is that the franklin experience is uh that you get what you put into it and so the uh the challenge that you would like to have, the effort that you would like to see, the results that you'd like to see is a product of both the experience and what you put in. And so really keep an open mind to as many things as you can, try as many things as you can, uh, meet new people, talk to people you would normally talk to, and you'll have a fantastic experience. Along those lines, I would say that what I love the most about our community is that we all adapt and try to have fun no matter what the circumstances are. So I would just say, you know, try to do that. We know this is the new situation, but you know, um, I'm working with the orientation team and also, you know, the Student Government Association has a lot of activities for you next semester and we're gonna try to make it work. So everyone, please, you know, follow the preventive measures. So 
all of the events that we have in mind can happen and the situation gets better. Yeah, I think going along with what both Will and Frida said, we do have a small campus community and it's very intertwined. And so you really do have the chance to get to know a lot of people from a lot of different places, a lot of different backgrounds, but not only your peers, also, you know, professors, staff, um, and you really get to kind of see interworkings. Um, Luciana? Uh, how the piece function, and it's really cool. So yeah, just get to know. Uh, for, sorry, I, I think that Gabby cut off for me. Yeah, I, I cut off. I don't know where I cut off. Basically, get to know people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, one uh, advice that I would say to new upcoming students would be keep an open mind for everything. Uh, everything is very different. Even coming through Franklin is a really like unique experience and coming through Franklin during a COVID era is an extra new experience. So just keep an open mind with everything, with professors, with your peers, with whatever staff members are telling you. Um, and it will be just, all we wanna have is a good time here. And everyone is there to support you, whether it is your students or um, staff members or faculty. So yeah, just, don't be afraid to ask for questions for help and everything. We're here to help you. Excellent. All right, now I'm going to go back to the last questions. Yes, your students can go on the balcony while they're quarantined. Um, Someone was asking about the exact date for the arrival. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but arrival phase one is uh, August 28th and 29th, and phase two is September 6th and 7th. And I put that link into the into the chat as well. Um, yes, to the SIM card at an airport. Uh, what hours can I arrive on campus on the 28th? Any time during the 28th. We'll be ready for you. Nine, nine to five, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Right, right, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, so. How big are the balconies? Um, it depends. Different buildings have different balconies, so it depends, but I think um, Arone students have a table and chairs. Um, I think an LDB too, a table and chairs. So it, it just depends. Not every building has a balcony, however. So um, just be patient. I know lots of buildings that are, that are, each building is unique and different. And that's what makes Franklin really interesting and fun. I think students have been happy with the housing. Um, there's a virtual tour on the Franklin website. So do take a look at that so that you're familiar with, with what the residence halls look like. But each building is unique and different. And even inside of each building, each room is unique and different. So this is why it's a little bit complicated for us to tell you exactly what every room looks like. So um, that's the variety and that's what makes it um, fun to be here. But I do so, see a question saying that we're renting linens. How can our student get the other things that he needs? So the rooms are furnished. Um, I think Dean SSB and I were talking about this the other day. We would recommend that you rent linen, linens. Mm -hmm. And, and so they come with towels, linens. right? Yeah, so towels, sheets, pillowcases, and then the rooms are furnished. And the linens are washed in a Swiss washing machine, which let me tell you, washes for about two hours. Um, so they, they are ready. Um, that we put them in, uh, students who rent them, we put them in their room. So they are ready for the student, or washed already, ready to go on the bed. Um, I recommend doing it this year. It's more sustainable as well. When they leave, they just uh, take the sheets, linens off and put them in their room on the floor so that when we clean it, we can account for their linens. So very sustainable. So it's much better than buying and throwing them away. So you reuse what we have um, and they're ready for your student. Um, the math and the, oh, there's a question about um, HIPAA and FERPA and things like that. So your students are 18, normally are 18 and over. Um, and when they are, then they're in charge of their academics and their uh, health. And if they want to notify you, they need to let us know that or they need to, they can notify you directly. We really encourage you to communicate directly with your students. Um, but if they ask us 
to keep something private and to not notify the parents. We are not, a, we, we follow the, the law on that. We are not allowed to notify you. Um, Deborah, do you want to say anything else about yeah. that? Yeah, so it's true. Even if your student's not 18, once they go to a university, they are um, under FERPA, which is the privacy. So their information is private. Many students want to tell their parents everything and we, we encourage that. The student can tell us to call you as well if they have a medical situation. But if the student asks us to keep it private, we are obligated to do that except when the student's um, life is at risk or they're at risk of hurting someone else. So if there's self-harm or harm of someone else as a threat, then we uh, will call the family um, and we have the right to do that. So we are, um, like I said, uh, counseling. We have a counselor on staff. So um, Corbin Moreau is our counselor. She's also the accommodations um, coordinator. So if your student um, has gotten uh, accommodations in their previous institutions. They might be eligible when they're here and they should follow the information that's on the website. There's some information about how to request that. Um, we also have a um, coordinator of student medical services and well-being who is an RN. So she was a nurse uh, in an emergency room in the U.S. and um, supports our students here. And she, the, both our nurse and counselor are liaisons with the medical community. All of my doctors were recommended um, by Chris Schmidt, our, uh, the coordinator for student medical services and well-being. I'm happy with them all. So um, they really know the facilities and they know what's available, um, especially with, given our student health insurance and, and what's in Lugano, what's available. So very good medical care. So please don't worry about that. I think there's excellent care here in, in Switzerland. Um, the question was more geared towards obviously language um, at clinics and hospitals and the assistance of that. Would you like to touch on that as well? Sure. Um, I think often students are going to the hospital either with um, a friend. We also have a, um, an RA, a resident assistant on duty. So that's a 24 hour um, phone that is answered by our trained student leaders. And we have a second tier of emergency support, which is professional staff. And um, our professional staff in the office of student life carry that number. Students can go to the hospital on their own. They can ask their RA to go with them. They can ask a friend. Um, but our, we, our nurse and counselor are not able to escort students to the hospital um, because it would just be, it's very time consuming and they both work um, limited hours and we want them here on campus to support students. So if your student needs to go to the hospital, they can definitely ask for help. Um, but many of the staff do speak um, English. If they don't, students, maybe they have a friend who speaks German um, at the hospitals. Many uh, staff will speak German or French, which are the other primary languages in Switzerland. So I think they just do, your student just needs to ask for help. And um, so we can, we can get that help to them. Dental is not included in the medical insurance unless a student um, damages their teeth in an accident, then um, dental will be uh, covered for that repair. So, okay. Um, Somebody asked about masks. I recommend bringing a mask that you can wash and reuse. It's more sustainable. Um, so you maybe you want a mask for every day and then you wash it and wear it um, another time. So I, I think it depends on your student how quickly they want to be washing masks, but maybe one mask for every day or three masks and they wash them and yeah. wear them again. Maybe travel with a small thing of travel detergent so you can wash by hand in the sink when you get there for those first 10 days. You won't need a mask inside, but you'll want to wear, wash the masks that you travel with, right? Um, yeah, students will receive their residence hall information when they check in. So again, we are doing our best to honor their request that they put on their um, housing form. So they've indicated their top three choices and we um, do our best to accommodate that. And then we also will maybe have a 10 day quarantine location for your student. Um, right now it's a very complex um, puzzle that we will be putting together and um, doing our best to make sure everyone is safe and that they have a good experience. So we will definitely be sharing this recording. It'll be available to everyone uh, in the next few days. Um, let me see. Oh, student leaders should have been told by their um, supervisor of, of what the food, um, what food is provided and, and where the student leader needs to take care of it for themselves. So they should contact their um, supervisor if they don't know the food situation for their case. So 
academic mentors, um, it's Kate Roy and Leslie Tidoldi. Orientation mentors, it's Ebony Rayford. Resident assistants, it's Russell Martin. Did I miss any leaders? Uh, there are some students who might be arriving early for this career services, the career seminar, um, and they should come tag Ebony Rayford for questions about that. And then also, I did see a question about um, if you're a new student and you don't know what house or what resident you're in, how are you going to fill out the food form? Like Dean Deborah just told us, you'll get your information upon arrival. You can fill out the um, form right then, and the amount will be detracted from your meal plan um, because all new students have a meal plan. And but that's a good question. Shouldn't they fill out the form before the, this food form earlier? We need to, we'll need to know that earlier. So you can leave the residence blank if you say we don't know yet. Just tell, we'll, we'll have to, we can go back and fill that in for you as soon as we know. Leslie mentioned that she added a new feature that a new student will indicate I'm a new student. So when they oh, fill out the go. form, they will just indicate I'm a new student. And we'll figure it out. We'll, we will have lists. We will make sure the food service knows exactly where everyone is. So don't worry about that. Okay. Where does the student go to to report? So we're waiting uh, to find out who's coming when because we don't want to have too many people um, check in at the same time so we can keep up the social distance. So we will be um, uh, notifying your student on where they need to check in after we have all the information of arrival. So we may need to have uh, multiple check-ins and we can assign students where to go. So definitely we will let you know. The good news is we'll have uh, students, um, orientation leaders, and our orientation mentors will be at the Lugano train station. So when your student gets to the Lugano train station, they will be met by Franklin students wearing Franklin gear. Um, so it'll be easy to see and they will guide them They'll help them get to campus, whether it's a taxi or it's a shuttle. Um, there will be some uh, assistance so they can get to campus. So we are gonna follow up on this webinar. It's nine o'clock here, it's getting close to my bedtime. Um, we are gonna follow up on this webinar with uh, a what to pack list and uh, what we recommend that you bring for quarantine. We put out on the Instagram, what would you, what do you think you can't look, is there anything you can't live without? when you quarantine and we've gotten some neat replies. So we'll be sure to uh, put those all together for you. Um, and we will get you those. They'll be there sent to parents, sent to students and on the website as well. Uh, is there anything that anybody else wants to add before we call it an evening? I would just like to say that there's gonna be two panels over the summer. So if you guys have any questions regarding orientation, there's gonna be, the first one is on July 28th at 7 p.m. Swiss time, and the second one will be August 13th at 4 p.m. So we will be there, the, the orientation team will be there to answer more of your like specific questions on orientation and how that's gonna look when the incoming students get here. Perfect. So yeah, and we're always really happy to answer questions. If there's something you need to know more about, just shoot us an email, let us know, or you can, in the portal in Slate, you can ask those kind of questions. And I know our admissions team is always available. So thank you everyone for being here. We're really looking forward to seeing you in August and have a healthy and safe summer.